Sure. I have to be forthright and say we took some liberties with that. Uh, basically, we borrowed the conceit of, you know, I think you can have a tryst with someone and it could be short-lived and one person could harbor feelings for the other person and those feelings could be very much unreciprocated. If you don't see that person very often or ever again, it's, it's, it can be easy to recover. Time will generally heal those wounds. If you're forced to work with that person and see them every day at 9 a.m., the wound is ripped open uh, fresh every time, every day. So it's like Chinese water torture. And then if you add on top of that this sort of childhood baggage this, which this guy's negotiating with, then it kind of makes for a very unsavory um, uh, situation which could, which could um, go badly um, at, at one point. It's inevitable. We took liberties with the, the specifics of his memory. We took liberties with the location of the lab. And we took li uh, liberties with basically the act three, most of act three, the last leg of the movie. The cast, uh, I'm really, really, really so proud of this cast, and I think everyone did such a great job, and in in, in, in I think it's very much an ensemble piece in many ways, um, much more than I think we initially intended. But um, I found them mostly through Gabe Kuttner. I went to a party, what's that Boston Theater party? That uh, they, Elliot Norton Awards. The Norton Awards one year, and I met um, a lot of people, and basically everyone who I didn't meet there through one degree of removal, I, I, I met through the Boston Theater scene. And it was just, once I finally tapped that vein, uh, we found a lot of incredibly talented actors. And I think what's really neat about it is all the actors are local, um, for the most part, all the actors are local. The only, um, we used a body double for Kathy, who plays, who's played by Dakota Shepard, and she's not local. Uh, and, the, and our main female lead, Danielle, is not local. Everyone else is local. And I thought that was uh, really great to make a movie with all these local people, with local resources, local police officers, a local laboratory. <laughs> So it was really fun, and it's really fun to show it here tonight and have the Coolidge Corner be in the movie itself. <laughs> so. Yeah. The background music was haunting and effective. Can you tell us what it was and how you went about selecting uh, the soundtrack? Sure. Yeah. Um, the sound, Alex and I are both very, very specific uh, music, ha uh, music <laughs> fans. So when we were cutting the film, we were very selective in the music that we used as a temporary track. Um, we then passed that along to our composer, a fellow who's worked on Alex's uh, previous three, three films. His name is James Lavino, and he's um, super talented. So he would then take the track and work it, and through a back and forth, he would make it his own, kind of keeping in the, the vein that we wanted. Um, which sometimes is big, but we were taking a swing at the music being very subtle, although sometimes it's not, but initially that's what we wanted, I think. Well, um, it took us a long time to come up with a title, and uh, we shot the movie under a different title, and then finally Garth's girlfriend came up with Rubberneck, and uh, for me a light bulb went off. I thought it was a great title. I just like the word, just syntactically, I, I like it. Um, but also, um, you know, there, there's a sort of very direct interpretation, an explicit sort of interpretation of it and how it relates to the story. But then there's also kind of, I feel, uh, I don't want to be too pretentious about it, but it is a film festival, so maybe this is the, f <laughs> the, f the forum for that. But I, I like especially as we kind of go into his backstory and we see how his past does haunt him and how he is shackled to the trauma of his past, uh, which is behind him. We thought that it does sort of reverberate uh, in a metaphorical sense as well. And that's what really made me feel it was a keeper. So what was it like to, for Alex, the director, to work with Alex, the actor? Well, they don't get along very well. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 there, wasn't, there wasn't like this binary split or anything like that. You know, um, me and Garth would talk about, you know, all, everyone here, we, we would talk about the scene before we would do it. We would all try to remind ourselves what the scene is about, what's the tone of the scene, what are the motivations for the actors, what's at stake, and how does this scene relate to the bigger picture of the film? And the main thing that I try to remember as an actor, and kind of the only thing, is the, just the tone. Just don't forget the tone. And Garth was always there to be the tone police, and just make sure that this is the tone, this is the frequency that we need to vibrate for this scene. And beyond that, I didn't really think too much about it. I don't, I, you know, I, think, I thought the less that I would think about that specifically, the better I'd be, because I, I don't want to clog my mind with other stuff, which I thought was, um, irrelevant. I would like to say something about the IFFB. This is their 10th year. 
and uh, they've been doing an incredible job, and I think everyone should give them a nice warm round of applause for an incredible job well done. Keep it up. Thank you so much for coming to see the film. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.